everybody for coming to today's press conference. I'd like to introduce our Director of Athletics, John Wildhack. Sue, thank you. Morning, everybody. So I just want to start uh, by opening. First of all, I just want to thank uh, Coach Babers for his contributions and his commitment to our program, our university, and our community. Um, he's a class act, a class act and a class person. And, uh, you know, that made yesterday's decision more difficult, made the conversation more difficult. Um, but I want to thank Coach Babers for his contributions, what he's done for the program, and uh, just the way he's conducted himself. Um, he's represented our university, and I think our community in a first-class fashion. The decision was not a knee-jerk reaction, not an emotional decision. I've evaluated the program on a consistent basis. To me, what, one of the things it really boils down to is November. We've not had the success in November. You know, two years ago, we were five and four, coming off momentum, road victory at Virginia Tech, Boston College, lost the last three, five, and seven. Last year, we started six and zero. Oh. You know, we lose five in a row, have to beat BC to get to seven and five. You know, same thing this year, start four and zero, oh, four and three. So there's a consistent theme that we've not been successful in November. And we played meaningful games in November, and that's what you want. You want to be in a position where you play games in November that matter. Matter in terms of your bowl position, matter in terms of your status within the conference, your standing within the conference, et cetera, that type of thing. But we've not had the success um, that we need, and, and that really is one of the things that stood out to me. I want to thank Coach Nunzio for stepping in. Um, he's done this before. We spent a lot of time with him in the past 24 hours. Our emphasis on, on this week is, is kind of twofold. Number one is let's prepare this team to play Wake Forest, to get bowl eligible. And if we are six and six, if we win Saturday, we will go to a bowl. Let's honor our seniors the right way. We will do the senior walk after the game on Saturday night. And it's a chance for the community. And I do hope that they come out and support our seniors for everything that they've given to this program and this community. Second is the staff has been in contact uh, with all of our recruits, our commitments for this year um, to reinforce that our commitments are solid and to uh, hold this recruiting class together. The search is, is underway. Um, it started you know, yesterday, after my meeting with Coach Babers, the uh, coaching staff, support staff, and the team, it will be thorough. At the same time, we'll try to be as efficient as possible. So with that, let me open it up to questions. So right here in front of Mark, please. Good morning. I totally hear your points about November and his record, but what prompted you to make the change with just one game remaining in this regular season? Two, two, two things is, uh, number one, it gives us a week, gives us a head start, right, on doing the due diligence and naming a successor. So let's take advantage of that week. Um, secondly, as I met with Dino before the season, and I told him the, the benchmark was seven and five. We met after the Florida State game. I reiterated that. Once that obviously be, wasn't attainable, um, it was time to move and make a decision. John, did you give Dino the, the, the option of coaching uh, the final game or not? I did. Um, were you surprised at all that, that he opted not to? No, and I, I told him, I said, it's, it's his decision, and I didn't try to sway him one way or the other. Uh, why coach Campanelli as the interim guy? Was there any, I guess, tactical decision looking forward in that, or was it just get through this game? I think two things is, number one, he's done it before. You know, he's an interim at Rutgers um, for a longer period of time, so he's had the, the experience of that. Um, he's an experienced coach um, at the high school level, the assistant level. 
Obviously, New Jersey is a really important recruiting ground for us. We got a number of verbal commitments from from New Jersey, so that factored in as well, Emily. Jesse, John, what are you looking for the most in the next head coach of this football program? You want somebody who's 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 a really good leader. Um, it's a complex operation to be a head football coach. You need someone who's a really good leader. I think someone who's a really clear communicator, um, one who can develop. You know, most Power Five schools, you know, we're developmental schools, right? Who has that eye for talent? Who can develop that talent? Someone who can communicate and build a staff, um, not only of assistance, but support staff as well. Someone who's gonna represent the values of our university and our community as well. John, will you be using a search committee? Uh, we will be using a search committee. Haven't finalized that, but yes. Uh, will you be using It'll a, be small. A cert, not only a search committee, but will you be using an outside consulting firm? We're working with Bob Bodine, right. and, and Bob and I were on the, on the phone yesterday numerous times. Tommy? Hey, John. Uh, is connections to Syracuse and some background familiarity with the 315, is, is that going to be an important characteristic in your search? Tommy, I'm not sure it's got to be a direct connection to the 315, but I think experience in the Northeast, I think is, you know, either as a player, as a coach, as an assistant coach, I think, I think is important. It's really hard, I think, if you take somebody from the East Coast and put them out in the West Coast, right? You don't have those relationships, those recruiting relationships, those relationships with high school coaches. You know, it's not lost on me that our four most successful coaches, in a sense, Coach Schwartzwalder grew up in Morgantown, right? Northeast. Coach Mack grew up in Maine, UMass. Coach Pasqualoni, Connecticut. Coach Marone, the Bronx. Um, so there is a little bit of history there, and sometimes you know, history can be a really good teacher. John, kind of going off of that, do you look to Syracuse Orange football alumni when you do this search? Is that important to you to find someone who's been through the program, knows the program, has lived it, and can share that? That would be an attribute, but I want to hire the best person, and the best person who I think can lead this program and lead this program successfully. So I don't, I don't want to narrow the pool, you know, and I'm not, okay, they have to be an offensive specialist, they have to be a defensive specialist. You, you do that, you kind of narrow the pool of candidates. Um, so it's the, best, it's the best coach who I think has the attributes to lead this program, to take this program forward to where we want to go. I would also add to that if there's, you know, if there's candidates that have uh, experience in special teams, Special teams is critically, critically important in football. And, and when special teams is kind of situational football as well. Steve. John, you talked about being thorough with the search, but also being efficient. And right. I know you know the transfer portal is, you know, uh, the, the next date is, what, December 4th? Right. Um, do you have a timeline in mind, and is it realistic to, to have things narrowed down by December 4th? Steve, I don't, you know, there's not a definitive date per se, but I'm aware of December 4th. So looking big picture, coaching style, coaching values, what are you looking for with the next head coach of Syracuse football that will be, you know, markedly different than Dino Babers? Yeah, you know, I'm, not, I'm not sure it has to be markedly different per se, but I I'm interested in the philosophy that this person has, right? They're, their philosophy in terms of offense, their philosophy in terms of defense. I mentioned special teams, recruiting philosophy, player development, evaluators of talent, absolutely critical. I mean, one of the things that's important to, to any program in the recruiting process is to minimize the misses, right? If you do that, that's one way that you create more depth. So someone who's done that, who's demonstrated they can, they can do that. Hi, good morning. Um, the success of the football team will have a lot of ripple effects off campus as well. If Dino's benchmark for this final season was seven and five, what will the goalposts look like for a new coach over 
X number of years to be able to be nationally competitive to make CNY an attractive place for alumni to come back to, for people to fill bars in the city, et cetera? Well, I think, you know, I've said repeatedly numerous times is, is when you start a season, the goal is to play that 13th game, right? And depending on how good you do in the first 12, depends where that 13th game is and who you play against it. And if you play those first 12 really, really well, maybe you get 13 and, and more than that. Um, I expect us, and we can be a winning program. We're not that far away. Are there areas that we need to address? Yes. Will they be addressed? Absolutely. But it's not like this is a total reboot. You know, that, you know we're, we're a two and 10 team and you gotta totally reboot this. There's strengths. But there's a, we've, got to, we've got to analyze our areas where we need to improve upon and take the necessary steps. And that's one of the things the next head coach is gonna to have to do is all right, what are the areas that we need to refine and we need to get better so that we can have the success that we all covet? You know, in terms of this area, um, I, think, I think this is an attractive area. I mean, if you look at the momentum that this community has, right, you know, look at it from a micro perspective, and you can start with micro. Um, but I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of momentum in this community. And for a coach, you know, this is a great place to raise a family. So there's a lot of attributes here, and I'm going to emphasize that. John, what does the athletic department and the university need to continue improving outside of the head coach to make this a competitive program that's on the rise in the ACC? I think Emily is, and we've done this, is, is we're continued strategic investment in the program and do it in a smart way and do it in a way where you, know, you get the best ROI on that investment too. Um, you know, just, be, just because the, pro the programs that have the most money that doesn't necessarily always equate to success. And if you look around the country this year, Emily, you can identify some examples of that, right? So it's, you know, what are the resources that you have? What are the resources that you need that could be most impactful to get your program where we want it to be? John, another money question. And in terms of areas to improve in the program, in response to a question about depth several weeks ago, Coach Babers said that the problem is that his depth is being bought off by other, program, by other programs. The implication there is that Syracuse can't compete on the NIL landscape. Can you address that? And did his comment rankle you at all or ruffle your feathers? Were you surprised by that? Let me, let me answer this two ways. Is, is number one, look at some of the guys who went in the portal. Um, where did they go? How much are they playing? Right? You know, Deuce Chestnut, I don't, I'm not even sure he's on the active roster at LSU, right? He was a starter here, a two-year starter. Could have been a three-year starter. Um, Deuce leaves, all right, we get Jaden Bellamy, right? He just moved himself into a starting position, playing pretty good football, had a pick six against Pittsburgh. Um, you look at Jihad Carter was a starter, you know, last half of the last season played really, really well, goes to Ohio State, doesn't play much. The only person who's really left us and gone to the portal and had great success is Jawar Jordan. Well, Jawar got hurt, and the year Jawar got hurt, Sean Tucker was a freshman, and the rest is history in that perspective. So there are guys that are going to go in the portal, but we've also gotten the guys out of the portal who've helped us with our depth as well. In terms of NIL, We've had donors step up, and we've had donors step up the next 48 hours. They've done so quietly, but in a significant way. So I think the narrative is that we're way behind. That's not accurate. Do we have the NIL pool that some schools have? No. Can we be competitive with our peers? Yes. Tommy. John, bouncing, bouncing right off that, have you thought about what that NIL pitch is going to be? Because it is a piece that I'm sure coaches are, are going to be asking you about. Absolutely, Tommy. And again, that's you know, the work that's been done and the commitments that have been made is we can tell the coach this is, you know, this is where we are in this space and that we can be competitive. And again, NIL, and I've said this repeatedly, and our coaches have said this repeatedly, it's most important from a retention perspective, right? 
We want to, regardless of the sport, when you have players that are ACC, all ACC caliber, all America caliber, though it's important to retain those. And if you retain those players, then an offshoot of that, it will help in your recruiting as well. John, what is it about this football program specifically? Why come to Syracuse? Why should a coach take this job over another job? What is the key element or elements here for Syracuse? Number, number one, I think there's a commitment from the university to this program, and I thank the chancellor, I thank the board for that. Um, we've, had, we've had success here. If we had as much as we want, no, but we've had success. Again, I don't think, as I said earlier, this is not a total reboot. You know, we've got, some, we've got really good players. And if you can keep that nucleus together, add to that nucleus, right? Enhance our recruiting efforts, our player development efforts. We can win. We can be very competitive in the ACC. We're not, you know, we're not that far away. Um, so that's, you know, that's my, that's my pitch. And if you look at also in the terms of the investment that we've made, right? I mean, you look right outside there. You know, new football operations center. We've not made an investment like that, Syracuse Athletics, and I don't know how long. You know, if you look at what we've done with the dome, if you look at the Ensley Indoor Practice Facility, we have a package of facilities which is, is, is competitive with our peers. Um, we're, in a, we're in a good recruiting area, maybe not within a 50 mile radius per se, but within a four and a half hour radius, right? New England, downstate New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, the mid-Atlantic states. You know, we're an hour 45 minute flight from Atlanta, an hour and a half from Charlotte. You look at our roster, we have players who are contributing now from those states. You know, Florida as well. So there's a lot to sell here. And there's a lot I think a coach can look at. And one of the things that I've been enthused about over the past 24 hours is the number and also the quality of some people who've reached out to me directly, um, because I know some coaches directly or indirectly through the representation. There's interest in this job. Chris Carlson. John, the, the buyout money, was that something you had to raise from donors or is it institutional um, funds? We've worked, we've worked hard um, internally to, to to deal, for, deal with that. Do you, does it impact your ability to, to pay the next coach? Do you anticipate no. being around that $4 million number? Well, still? you know, it depends. It depends who, who the coach is. And it's not only the coach, it's, you know, your support staff, right? What your assistant pool is, your, you know, your, your, just your support staff and the recruiting department, player personnel department across the board, strength and conditioning, all of it. So the fact you have to pay him, it shouldn't we've be. Already, we've already accounted for that. Uh, John, you'd mentioned the um, importance of a 13th game, and I was just, um, you said about the 7-5 and five benchmark. I was just wondering, what's the difference to you between 6-6 six and six and 7-5, and five, and how important is it? Well, I just think, you know, 6-6, six and six, again, I go, I go back to what I said at the outset, right? You look at November. You know, we haven't had success. Boston College was a very winnable game. Didn't win it. Saturday night was a very winnable game. We didn't win it. You know, you win those two, we're not here today having this conversation. Um, that's the difference. Um, as you mentioned, it's been a tough November and even a bit of a tough October um, for the fan base, a bit frustrating. What is your message to fans ahead of Wake Forest and even a potential bowl game? Well, I think for Wake Forest, I would hope our fans would, would come out and support our seniors. For, for what they've given to this program and what they've given to the university and the community. Um, in terms of going forward, I, I will do everything I can to hire the right coach who can lead us to the success that we all covet. Over to Jordan from WJBZ. Um, have you spoken to the players about um, the firing of Coach Favors yesterday and the, the program moving forward? I did, I spoke uh, 
I met with the assistant coaches, uh, I met with the team, and I met with the support staff as well yesterday. John, you, you've mentioned this as, in a, as an ascendant brand in, in the ACC and in college football. Tell me how you, you relate that to the coach you're talking to. How do you sell this as an ascendant brand, and, and what are the prerequisites you want from that, from that coach? What are some things that, you know, before they walk in the door, they have to have on the resume? Well, again, I think, you know, either, either head coach experience or coordinator experience at the Power Five level, I think, is important. Doesn't mean that a position coach couldn't do it, but that's it's a really big leap, Brent, for a position coach to a head coach position. Um, so I think, again, head coach experience, coordinator experience, again, somebody who's got the leadership skills, who's got the vision, right, who can, be, who can communicate. It's so important in coaching today to be a good communicator and be able to relate and communicate to the young men that they're going to be leading. In terms of an ascendant brand, I obviously wish our record was better. But again, when you look at the investment that, we've, that we're making, that we're committing, I think that speaks volumes in terms of it can be done here. When it comes to bringing this new person in, uh, what does the overall budget look like and how involved is the chancellor or the board when it comes to obviously wanting a name and a program that will raise recognition and get more people in the dome? I mean, obviously any, any decision that, it, that, I, that I make is, will be, have the approval of, of the chancellor. Again, I think I've already addressed that as, you know, I think we'll be in a position where we can be competitive. Go to Tommy. Looking to learn a little bit more about the coaching search, are you working on scheduled calls and meetings with agents? Have you ever just gotten a number and done a cold call? What are these I've next not, I've, not done, I've not done a cold call, Tommy. It's been more people calling me. Um, I probably received more calls yesterday than I have since I've been here in a, in a single day. Ava? Could you talk a little bit about what the morale of the team is as they head into this final game with a pretty big change happening? It's, it's, um, it's, it's hard, right? You know, it's Coach Babers was their coach. He was their leader. Um, they looked up to him. He ultimately was the person who recruited them because he had fi he has final say on who's in this program. So I I respect and acknowledge. You know, yesterday was a tough day for our team, um, and I'll be interested to see how they respond. And one of the messages I gave them yesterday is is take care of each other, take care of your brethren, and you know what? And let's and, and play play and show out for the seniors and send them out the right way. That was my two messages to the team yesterday. We have time for a few more questions. We'll go to Mark Frank first. Thanks for patience with my questions. Uh, to play off of Brent's question, you know, when you broke ground, you did uh, categorize the Syracuse football brand as an ascendant brand. In the wake of how the season has gone and firing Dino with one game to play, how would you describe the football brand on November 20th? I still think there's I still think there's ways that we are an ascending brand. From a record perspective, I get it. You know, five and six, not acceptable, right? That's why I made the decision that I made. But I go back in terms of the investment and the commitment that we've made, the investments that we've already made in the infrastructure of the program. So I think it is. Is there a lot of work to do? Absolutely. And I acknowledge that. But we will do the work. Go to Chris. John, a lot of times after a bowl game, uh, AD will extend a coach. Why didn't you extend Dino sort of after last year? What were you seeing? In last year? Yeah, yeah, after the bowl game. Yeah, I was, I was pleased with the progress that we made, right? 21, we were 5 and 7, you know, 7 and 5 last year. But I wanted to see more, candidly. You know, all right, can we put back to back 7 and 5 or better seasons together? We didn't do that. Do you think he lost any of his assistant coaches last year with a lot of turnover because of a lack of certainty? No, I don't. Brent? 
for the final question, please. John, I just want to circle back. You mentioned within the last 48 hours you've had some people step up in terms of donations. Mm -hmm. Are these new donors? Um, some are new, some are existing donors, you know, but people who are passionate about Syracuse athletics, passionate about the football program, and want to, and want to step up and help us. And you mentioned they wish to remain anonymous at this point, which I, I respect that. But I guess what's the advantage of that, given that NIL is a very public game? Well, these I days? think it's not yeah, just NIL, but the any, whole, whole any time any time a donor contributes, it's it's up to the donor if they wish to be recognized or not. We've got capital gifts to the to the Lally Athletics Complex that are anonymous because that was the request of the donor, and we're always going to honor the donor's request. And NIL is no different in that. Thank you for your time today. Thank All right. Thanks, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.